part I wanted to start sort of comparing Rhino and Grasshopper and how you've been using Rhino and how you might implement it in Grasshopper. I also wanted to um, talk about sort of the organization of how you start to think about the different tools that you have um, and that will have to we'll look at a little bit of pseudo coding and also kind of arranged um, my definitions with color coding so you can kind of look at like the object geometry which is in yellow on the grasshopper definition and then sort of um, things that are being acted that are acting upon that geometry which would be the green and then the white is really more data organization or um, data input and when you start using grasshopper um, you want to transition from the way that you used to use Rhino which is usually you start with a thing and then you manipulate the thing somehow in um, Grasshopper a lot of times once you get really good at it you end up designing the process first and adding the thing at the end the thing is not the goal the goal is actually the process and the manipulation of the process um, so let's take a look at that um, Basically, what I'm going to start out with is just comparing and contrasting Rhino and Grasshopper options, just so you get a feel for it. And I'm going to use um, some a really simple way of doing that. I'm just going to use a row of columns. So if you were in Rhino, so if I'm over here in Rhino and I wanted to create two rows of columns, right, I could come in and I can use like the cylinder command over here, right, and I'll just... It wants me to pick a point, so I pick the center of it. It wants a radius, right? So I'm going to do 0.5. And then it wants a height. I'm just going to pull that up and type 10. And it gives me this singular column. Now I want to make two rows of that um, with a certain kind of spacing. So I'm just going to pick that guy and type in array. I could copy it multiple times, but that's this array command is basically a multiple copy packaged into one thing. So the number in the x direction, obviously I've done this before, is 10. The number in the y is going to be 2. I just want two rows. And then I only want one in the z. And I want the spacing between the 10 to be at 4 feet, so I'll type in 4. And the y spacing I want a little bit wider. I want that to be 10. And it's going to give me an example. So it's previewing it for me and it's leaving the command string, this part of it, open. Do you want to change these things now? No, I'm fine with it, so I'm going to hit enter and it's going to create that. So I made one thing and then I made multiples of it and sort of did translation upon that one thing and it gives me this baked thing. But if I want to update it, I can't really do that, right? I'm just kind of stuck here. Um, so <clears throat> what we want to do is take a look at like what happens when you use Grasshopper to do this and how in a direct translation you just have basically an open command string. Um, so I'm going to start with the geometry, which is pretty much a typical process in abstract modeling again. And so if I come in here and I open this guy, uh, enable it, right, you're going to see almost the exact same process, right? So I did create a column using a circle and an um, extrusion here. It's a little different than, the, than that. But basically what you can do here is use this rectangular array command that opens up the x and the y count and the x and the y size based on a rectangle, right? So do a preview. You can see that rectangle, right? If I change the size of the rectangle, then my grasshopper definition changes. If I change the x size, right, my grasshopper definition changes, right? So if it's set up exactly the same as the other one, it looks just like that. But I can go in and obviously increase the count you know, make more rows here. So I have a very open command string. So I can come in and change, you know, the height and the radius of those columns, those extrusions, right? So that's just a really basic sort of look at the difference between the two, basically opening up the command string. All right, so let's go ahead and, and disable this guy. And I'm going to I'm going to get rid of these. I think you get the point, you know. Um, a couple of other things I wanted to look at is that you can sort of come in and look at and create things in multiple different ways. That might be the most efficient um, in terms of combining the maybe the least amount of nodes. I don't know. But if like if I turn this one on, 
and enable it, I get the same thing, but I did it a little differently in that I did a linear array instead of a rectangular array, or um, instead of a, yeah, instead of a rectangular array, and then I just copied that one. So I have sort of a different sort of control, you know, over this guy. So, you know, it just gives me a different way of controlling it, and it's kind of up to you how you want to arrange these things. So. Oftentimes it's the process that you're using or the thing that you want to test. And then here's one more version that's even sort of more broken up. So here's the column and then I just copy the column but instead of using a regular number slider which would just give me one, right, and then I copy that column, what I do is I create some data down here. So this range allows me to say I want to have some a total of 40 and I want 10 inside of those and then if I plug that range into the move it gives me this whole series right of columns based on these two moves. So right so basically what you can do, you have a different control here, like I can actually change the steps within the 40 and it doesn't care about the distance between them, it just divides it out for me. So this gives me a little bit of a different way of controlling it versus a series which would demand that I figure out what the step is and then it would just get bigger. So there's kind of a different ways you can arrange information that is more effective and uh, for what you're trying to do. Alright, so let's go ahead and disable that.